That's right. We're back. Season 10 premiere. Welcome back to the Midwest Most Dangerous Podcast. Lock pod, left of center podcast. We missed you. We mi- Double digits. Season 10. <laughs> yeah. Makes it feel like it's 10 years, but it's <clears throat> only been a couple. Three. Morning, Jill. Hey. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? It's good to be back. Good. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Jesus. What's up, Jabez? Hey. I just wanted to yeah, pop morning. that in the microphone. <coughs> season uh, season 10, episode one is brought to you by Rogers Roofing. When you demand nothing but the best from your home and family, trust the industry leader, Rogers Roofing. For over 54 years, they've been transforming homes in Northwest Indiana and the Chicagoland. Their commitment, Rogers Roofing's commitment to quality shines through in, our, in their roofing, siding, gutters, and windows, all backed by the most comprehensive warranties in the business. Visit Rogers Roofing website at rogersroofing.com or call 219-933-9145 to schedule your free consultation. It's Rogers Roofing. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Rogers Roofing. Yeah. We're doing things differently this year, everybody. I see that. I'm already off kilter. I know. Well, that saves us time in the show. We'll just knock I mean, It's all the same time. We have like each, I figure like each episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors. Look at that. I like Rogers that. Roofing. Roll it out. That's right. So season one, the premiere episode yeah. of season 10. And I'm repping a former uh, sponsor who doesn't sponsor that. us this year. Well, he sponsors us during uh, bug season. The bug guy. Yeah. Gave me my shirt. During yes. Lockpot night at the uh, Oilman Stadium. Oh, we're going to get into some photos of that. Yeah. Let's talk about what we did all summer. Well, let's say, okay, let's let's rehash where we stopped. We stopped on like July 19th, I think, or something. Yeah, that's right. My uh, Friday my Navy of guys Fest. Were in there. My Navy yes. guys. Yes. Yeah. You spilled beer all over the studio. I did? Yeah. It's still here. I, I, listen, really? Did you hear that, John? I did. I don't remember. <laughs> I a did. Long time ago. <laughs> Sticky so, droplets of beer that everywhere. That was such an stuff. honest... I did. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was two months ago. It was months ago. That was I eight weeks ago. And no one's cleaned this. And John, in here. John said he walked in. And he's and like, no man, it kind of still smelled like Probably beer not. in here. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like fluoride and beer in this office. And dust. And dust. <laughs> and definitely dust. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I sneezed when I walked in. <laughs> yeah. You like it's like you're opening <laughs> Al Capone's, you know, <laughs> locker. Has the door been open since we left? Because I haven't been in there. I think uh, a couple times, like people that we know might have been in my office for uh, something. And then you're like, like showing it up. Well, they're like, is this, can I see the studio or yeah. something like that? People, yeah. it's like a tourist attraction. Yeah. <laughs> people from months to <laughs> drive up. Are we on Google? Uh, um, we're, yeah. We, sh- yo, we should have a location. Mm. Next studio, nah. Joe. Nah. Do, do you want people to know where we are? No, I do. no, I do. no. I don't work there. No. I don't care. <laughs> it's like that Bonnie and Clyde exhibit that used to be at the. The convention yeah. was that Bonnie and Clyde? Or no, something? Darren Dill- Dillinger. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. So far, we've talked about Al Capone, Bonnie and Clyde, and Jack Dillinger. John, your Northwest Indiana region Sorry. knowledge is lacking. Hard. It went Bonnie down, man. Bonnie and Clyde. Because he's been traveling the traveling the world, traveling the no, country. No, yeah. I wish. No. Um, I well, spread, anyway, <laughs> I think I spread uh, COVID across Europe. Well, Ireland. Nice work. I did see some. Nice, last nice night. work. I didn't even know I had it, dude. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? You look great. Hey, no, I feel fine. I was it was one of those where you're positive, but mm. I felt like I had a head cold. That's re- re- to the extent of it. I didn't feel feverish. I wasn't achy. I wasn't tired. I was just like bitter. That's good. And then yet some <laughs> people that I know that were over in Ireland that got it got it bad. Yeah, Smitty. Yeah. Oh, I think HIPAA. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> wow. Oh God. <laughs> my bad. And lawsuit number two. <laughs> yeah, right. Our insurance agent's gonna right out the us. gate. <laughs> There's a lot of Smitties in the world. True. That's, that is true. Good point. It's the most common name. Good point. Yeah. That is a very good point. We don't know who we're talking There's about. There's a lot of Smitties. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, Smitty? every Smith calls himself Smitty, too. <laughs> like, real creative Smitty. <laughs> like, every Smith of the world is Smitty, right? I'm not me. Really? Although, some people called my dad that. I'm going to start calling and you Charlie. Smitty. Now, call then you get confused with the real Smitty. I could have been talking about you. And I've got a buddy that, named Smitty, that I call Smitty. Yeah, see? Mm-hmm. There you go. See? Hey, you shout got, out to everyone watching on YouTube. We're getting How many numbers. buddies? Do you call more than one buddy, buddy, uh, Smitty? Just one. Well, the <laughs> Smitty we know, and then another childhood friend. Yeah. 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 Wow. So uh, basically, uh, <laughs> well, we wait. went on what? I was going to say, I just want to focus. Like, so we, July 19th, it was like Little Wayne show night. We were about to go. To, it was middle of the festival. And then Little Wayne happened on Saturday yeah, night. He did. And then we left. Yeah. No, Jill didn't leave with us. No. Sure we invited her. Did you? Mm. Well, I don't think you did. Well, that would have been a weird one to yeah. travel. Yeah, we only had one hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it anyway. was so rando, too, Joe, because, like, so I fly out there with these two knuckleheads, right? And when I wake up in the morning in San Francisco, I'm completely by myself. <laughs> and it was only... That's, like, our travel it was, plans. It was 20... <laughs> it was so lonely. I woke up just, like... And it was only like 18 hours later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys weren't even on the ground 24 hours. And no. you were both flying out like impatient. It was insane. It was it was a lot of fun, though. I mean, 
you know, so, okay, we decide we're going to go and bookend. Now, Tom, of course, hit a couple of shows. I hit one, but he had a couple of shows in the middle. But we decided to bookend for Lockpod the uh, Grateful Dead or Dead & Company tour. We went to L.A. that you all know about that listened to season nine. And then we decided we're going to hit the last show of the tour, which was in San Francisco on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. The only problem was that was the last night of the fest. So we had to sacrifice one night of the fest to do this. But they survived. They good did. job by everyone did. that did that. Yeah, but, we had a good crew. But like, so we fly into, so Tom um, convinces us we should fly into Sacramento. Um, yep. And we land in Sacramento. Nice place. By the, by the way, Tom educated us a little bit on Sacramento. I didn't realize it was like in the valley and stuff. Or in the desert, rather. Yeah. And uh, we land, and it's 109. It was oh. it 109. Was 109. It was 109. And then I was like, hey, I'll be right out to get the rental car. And <laughs> Tom and John are in the parking lot for a good uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, dude. It was I, so hot. But so the crazy thing is, Joe, so we drive from Sacramento to San Francisco, which is an hour and a half-ish. Mm, two and a half hour. that day. It was that day. It was bad <laughs> because we got detoured. But by the time we got to San Francisco, it was like 70-something. 70 70 72. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, at, at that's concert how much it, time, 69. Isn't that crazy? Or like 61. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like dropped. Nice. It like, you know, because San Francisco is freezing. But the crazy thing, remember when the, it kicked us through Oakland? Like our tour took us really out of the way. Maps was, took us through Oakland. It was just... jacked. But by the way, we've landed on a Sunday, which is the worst. Just like here when everybody's coming home to Chicago from Michigan and the traffic's horrible. There, everybody's coming home from Tahoe. So they're going to the Bay Area. We land in Sacramento, which is the route. So we jumped into that traffic. It was horrible, which I didn't anticipate, which sucked. But we ended up going through Oakland. Mm. Oh, my God. Oakland's a tough town. I haven't been in Oakland in probably 10 years. We were like, it was like a movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was like an apocalyptic. There was a lot of people on the street. A burned lot of graffiti cars. and burned out cars, which I think it I, was like we, a movie, like we, you'd see in a movie. Like I, I was wondering, I think we all were. We said, like, I wonder if these are still from like the George Floyd riots. Are they still sitting here? I don't know. On man. the street, like, it was like burned out cars. <laughs> there was like it was, it was like a movie set. It was the scariest <laughs> like situation. There was no freaking way in hell I would have got out, and walked around. Like and no, I'm, I'm not ever uncomfortable in cities. I but agree. That was like that was crazy. I was happy that we hopped back on the Bay Bridge and got out, got into the city. Mm. By the way, conversely, I was so impressed by San Francisco and how I, I walked around cause you guys left the next morning. I walked around San Francisco looking for bad things yeah, to like talk tents about. or people shitting. On I, the was, sidewalk. Yeah. I was looking for some, I wanted somebody to shit in front of me. I was looking for it. Right. I, I saw nothing, man. I'll be honest with you. I walked all over San Francisco and it was freaking gorgeous, dude. Right. Like time? everything like, I saw. Yeah, I didn't see. But one. you were John left one. at like eleven o'clock. Yeah, but even yeah, even our before. walk, even our walk to dinner. Our you walk left to at like what time did you leave? Three a.m. What the fuck? I was there for like seven chill. hours. We Why? get in at like midnight from the show. And Kevin wakes up three hours later. Later, Tom. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> he was probably still all bright eyed and bushy. I had, sure. I had yeah. to get I yeah. had to get uh, to the airport and get back, and I got the last seat in the back of the United plane, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go to sleep. It was against the oh, galley. The doesn't no. recline. Oh, doesn't no. recline. And Dude, the, and the drink seat. card hit me about you can't uh, 40 times. Seat. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. I had to get on that flight, man. It was cheap. Really? I got that's why you got to go southwest, man. Yeah. Well, well no. I mean, I had to, I, it just didn't work out, but I had to get back yeah, early. Yeah, southwest doesn't fly out at 3 o'clock. They did not fly out at 5 a.m. like <laughs> United did. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's some great photos here. Like, uh, this one's great. We're, this is, like... And by the way, kudos uh, to Locomotive for getting us like a hotel that was right yeah, next. Man, to it. We, that was cool. it was walkable, right? It was, was like, like right here. Yeah, was, exactly. It was I like, think it was this. It was across the bridge. It could have been literally yeah. like when we walked out of the stadium, we were in our hotel room in like 10 minutes max. This that is I like never awesome. saw. The, yeah, it's true. We, we went there before, but this yeah. is the end of Shakedown Street. This is yeah. kind of cool across the bridge. And then, we, oh, there we are in front of Oracle. That was a long walk. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, this is, oh yeah, that was like in the middle of the show. And Tom, Tom, talk about like the fact, like when we walked in, we were like, on like we were on the, oh. not everybody could see the pictures. So we have to describe what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. It's a beautiful sunset at Oracle Stadium. But the crazy thing was like, we just walked in and we were right like, right there. Whoa. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy, Jill. So we walk in, you know, right field at Oracle Park is the bay, right? Mm-hmm. We literally walked in through like the bullpen there, which is cool, right? Because I'm a baseball fan, and we're like, Whoa, we're on this the field, is some... and we were trying to like explain it to John. Uh, John, you're not a huge baseball fan, right? N- not huge, but like, I was like, dude, you get like, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta sell. This that. is like, we are like, this is like the green monster sort of like. This is mm-hmm. something every baseball fan recognizes. We walk in just like right there, just like, oh, okay, we're on the field right in front of that wall. The freaking stage is right there. Like, and then as soon as we walk in, they start playing Bertha, which is one of my favorite songs. 
And like, Which we're I literally as the like, opener. I was like, they're going to play Bertha first. And we were literally mm. like right on the stage. Yeah. It was so weird. California awesome. is so weird. John, you got another photo there. I thought we had a photo of like maybe the outdoor. Right uh, here. Uh, that's the that. uh, drone show. That, that so yeah, ridiculous. that's the over the right field wall. Right? That was over the water. Yeah. Like literally those drones are flying over the water. There's Joe. We got to do this for the fest next year. Oh. I, already, I already heard. Good. Yeah, <laughs> we are going to, but I'm afraid with our winds that it's not going to be as easy as it was there. Our drones yeah. will be flying down the street. The drones are the so drone cool. will be in whiting. Check this out. I got a little little clip. Can uh-huh. I not put the notes here? Yeah, during space. Look at his brain, man. <laughs> <laughs> People were falling out during this. His brain this is, is wicked. So that's all drones, and they come up like in green, and then they like. Make the, something. The drone. Now, keep in mind, guys, the drones aren't moving. It looks like the drones are moving. The drones are stationary. There's literally thousands of drones stationary just standing there, and the lights are flickering from drone to drone. It's all AI generated. Yeah, there was like So, a, like, they don't have drones moving around. They literally fly up, and they. it's cool watching them. They just stick, and, like, they make a screen in the air. So they start as this, like, green, like Tom just described. There's, like, hun- look at how many there are, hundreds. And then they form whatever. They did Eyes of the World, remember? And they did That was like the first eye. thing they did. That's yeah. what they're building right there. The eye. That eye. Trippy looking, weird so eye freaky. looking Listen at Listen to you. the music. I know. It's like this is the beginning of space. But that was that was Dead and <laughs> Company. That was our last show uh, of the tour and probably the last show. What do you it, think about that? Like In that you... form, as far as like Bob Weir, um, you know, maybe a couple other guys probably not going to tour anymore. I hope that they... Have an iteration personally. That'd be great. Right. How so. many shows did they do on this tour? Not a lot. It was, oh, really? I got twenty five. Well, maybe what I was about to turn around because I have tour shirts like crazy. I have literally you my think whole twenty, twenty five, twenty. Yeah, 20, in that ballpark, yeah. twenty twenty five. It wasn't as big as their normal tour. Mm-hmm. It was like it was almost like they wanted a tour to have a last tour, and then uh, I I don't know. So, that, do you think John Mayer takes over? I hope so. I, that's cool. what I'm hoping for. Yeah. He's great. I mean, yeah, I just, yeah, I just wonder what's going to happen to all the folks on Shakedown Street. What are they going to do without Dude, the tour? I don't know what I'm going to do next year. <laughs> I went to freaking six shows this year. I don't mm. know what I'm going to do next summer. Yeah. Because okay. uh, I uh, I lived this year. I took advantage of the fact I had no life last year. and I did a good job this summer. Mm-hmm. So, All right. So we did, uh, we did that. Uh, what about the uh, – are we missing anything no, the show before we move on? Oilman well, Stadium was great. I think uh, – um, Mm, I got some pictures here. Yeah, with Lock Pod Night at Oilman Stadium. Just yeah, thank you for everybody that came out. Thanks to our sponsors who came out. Great job by uh, Steve <laughs> Kellogg, our, our business manager, on setting this up. There's Kyle the intern. It Kyle was the cool, intern man. was there. I sponsors were there. Even even the judge showed up. Even the judge was there. The judge, judge. I mean, look at there? that crowd. Look at that. Wow. It's such a great picture. Dude, that was like half the audience was there for Lock Pod yeah. that day. <laughs> it was. Thanks, Dom Popovac, for hosting us. I think we used more tickets than I was allowed under the the. Uh, he was a very oh, gracious. Did they host. have to turn people away at the gate? No, no he just, he's just like, come on in. Don Popovac was super cool. He let everybody in, and, and I think I only had, I want to say, thirty tickets. Yeah, I mean, he had probably more, fifty people at least, and he just let them in. He was super cool about it. And the oil men, we walked through their dugout to go on the field. That, that was, was crazy. cool. I was like, you were Tom was playing catch with a guy from Michigan State. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. shortstop from Michigan State. By the way, nice work on the first pitch. Yeah. You threw it in there. Mm-hmm. Wyoming won the strike. championship too, by the way. They won that night against the Corn Dogs. They won against the Corn Dogs, and they also won the championship for the league that they're in. So great job by Don and gracious host and beautiful. By the way, if you're ever looking for a place to go with the family, it was like had good food, it was good nice beer, the beautiful was stadium. That, it's a nice stadium too. Jill, have you ever coached there, Jill? Coach there? No. Mm-mm, the coach. freaking dugouts suck. And I know who built it too, by no. the way. No. That's the worst part of the stadium, but the fan doesn't have to worry about that. The fans mm-hmm. up there are chilling and it's really nice. You're close to the action. And but the dugouts, like you're close to the action in the dugouts too. <laughs> it's like keep your eye on the field at all time in those dugouts. Oh, that's great. Nice but, fun. Nice great time. job. Yeah, and thank yeah. you, Don. And great thank you, by the way, for bidding on that. Yeah, if would, yeah. If you wouldn't have bid full price. <laughs> Three hundred bucks, anything for you guys. Thank you know you. what I'm saying? Yes. That's how Write it off. Yeah, right. You talked a little bit about uh, getting COVID in Ireland, but you didn't really talk about why you were in Ireland. Well, Notre Dame uh, played in Ireland, and this is something we wanted to do. Marissa and I wanted to do during the COVID year, and mm-hmm. it got canceled. And Smitty, uh, who is uh, my fire chief, one of the Smitties we know. Smitty, is he the uh, one that had co- You're really drawing the lines <laughs> together. I have just here. tons of Smitties. I call Kevin <laughs> Smitty all the time, too. Hmm. Right, Smitty? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Where's what? the fire chief? I didn't answer. So, uh, 
So we uh, that got canceled in 2020, and a lot of people that were planning to do it bought tickets for this year and flew out there. I flew out there with Marissa, obviously, Patrick, and my mother-in-law, Lynn, who's probably listening. She's a lock potter also. And the four of us flew out there, and then... Looks Patrick, like a great stadium. This photo. It's a uh, that's a rugby stadium in Dublin. Yeah, it's a the Gaelic Athletics Administration okay. GAA. I believe that's their stadium. But uh, the Gaelic, the GAA in Ireland has stadiums all over the country, and they travel around and they play each other. It's pretty cool. I don't know if that's one of them actually, but that's their rugby stadium. Super cool. It's see how the roof is open mm-hmm. on that one end. Like a the, horseshoe. The American helicopters, there was three of them, literally flew right through that opening. It was crazy. Mm, that's kind of cool. They flew like up. Like it was crazy. That, like in the stadium. We nice were, work by the U.S. We, Army. We were sitting in the third deck on the front row, and I felt like the helicopters were right in front so of I us. So I can't really gauge like size of the state because to me it looks a little bit small, uh, smaller it than is. like a it is. Notre it's, Dame Stadium probably, or oh, yeah. Bears. It's or Max. It was probably smaller than uh, Soldier. But the thing about this stadium you don't appreciate is it goes really high, sort of like old Market Square Arena. Yeah. So, like, on a 50-yard line, it goes really high. Uh, so, I imagine there's probably max 40 in there. Okay, so that's kind of cool seeing a Notre Dame game at a 40,000-seat stadium. Yeah, yeah. Would you say majority ND fans? Uh, yeah. And how there was, was a few Navy fans, but it was by far a Notre Dame crowd. And so, like, I'm just curious, like, Dublin, to get it, and I've never been there, put it in perspective, like, bigger than Chicago, smaller than no, Chicago, bigger than Indy. smaller than Chicago, about similar to India, it seems like. Smaller than San Francisco. So For big, sure. Okay, so. It was not that busy. It was small uh, in the downtown. No, I was in, uh, you know, uh, the Temple Pub area, and it's a, like an old town. Kind Easy of to get around? Yeah, it's all walkable. Walkable. Mm-hmm. Totally. Like, it was a pain in the ass to do anything but walk. Was it inundated with Americans? Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. That's the one thing. Because of the game? Yeah. I, and next time I go, I'm not going with everybody. With 40,000 people? Yeah, dude. I got recognized. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I'm not, like, I don't want to go to Ireland you love that. and be recognized. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's fine. And uh, by the way, the gentleman that recognized me is a listener also, so sure. I'm not complaining. Okay? Yeah. But like, it was a very awkward walking into a bar and hearing people recognize me. It was very awkward. In Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> was, in Ireland. It was like, whoa. It was hey, like, Mayor. so shocking. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but so like, it, it, literally, John, I'm not even kidding. Like, I walked into a bar and I heard that. I was like, wow, that's cool and weird what is, that, what is that a picture of is that like that's ireland. forming ireland yeah they're forming ireland okay. in that picture Got it. but that was a really cool experience and by the way that stadium was like two and a half miles from uh where our hotel was and we walked there and back on purpose we were just walking everywhere mm-hmm. just so awesome jill you went to ireland mm-hmm. a couple of years ago did you you went you drove around though right i was on one of those big tours so you're on the big bus oh really you didn't hit we hit some stuff in dublin but then you know we how long was it like um, it was a week long too. Did you get to go to like uh, Belfast in Northern Ireland? No, it didn't, it didn't go to Northern Ireland. I want to go there next I time. I kind of do. Too. I would love to go there. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to see out. what the difference is. Agree, agree. And I want to get out in the country. I see like. Brexit versus no Brexit. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brexit. Um, so I think you had Ireland's some, nice, though, man. You had some other big family news because it wasn't just you, Patrick. Yeah. So uh, Chase uh, was flying out there with his, you know, well, his girlfriend Eileen and his friends Stephanie and Matt. And they were flying out for the game. Plus, they were like going to drive around uh, for a few days and enjoy the country as well. But Chase is a big fan, and I think Matt's also a big fan, and Eileen's a big fan, and I imagine Stephanie. So we all go to the game together. But Chase informed uh, Marissa and I that he was going to ask Eileen to marry him out there. And that's it. That's the picture. She right looks there. very surprised. Cliff Do you think that was staged? I mean, she's got her hand on her mouth. Yeah, I like in a, shocked in a, in a very shocking manner. What do you think, Joe? She didn't know. So she didn't. Not you know. don't think she didn't? Think how could you surprised. tell? That was a quick conclusion. She just looked surprised. Just, well, because of the hand, right? Yeah, the I hand mean, over the, the mouth. Picture, the hand on the mouth. So for those of you that chase like a gentleman is down. Look on, at that. What a cute picture that he's is. He's down on one knee proposing to her and Eileen sitting there with her hand over her mouth. And you're asking yourself who took that picture. That was set up. You know, Matt and Stephanie were aware ah, of what's going that's on. that's why it looked... Okay, got okay, it. Okay, so Matt and Stephanie were th- with them, and then they just sort of broke off by themselves, and then Chase dropped down on one knee right by the Cliffs of Moore, and Eileen sitting there with a hand over her mouth, and it's a very sweet And picture. Chase and Eileen, first of all, great couple. Congrats to both of them. They've known each other a while, right? It's not like they've... Yeah, they went to high school together. Chase uh, and Eileen went to... Look at that picture. <laughs> that was their first date. Chase was, looks like he's uh, 11. Chase is going to kill me. Yeah, he, in this up here, by the way. <laughs> he is going to kill me. Eileen's two inches taller than him in this picture. Chase is literally a little kid with Eileen. They went to turnabout or they went oh, to one of those or prom or, 
But that's them in their very first date, and Chase has wow. been chasing Eileen. Chase mm-hmm. has been chasing. Listen to yeah. you. Yeah. 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 It's ever since. Congrats. And to she's it. a wonderful lady. She does a great job with her career. She's a sweetheart. She's a great family woman, and they're going to be a great couple. And Chase is a great kid, you know, obviously. you got to be so, happy. Oh, I'm very happy. I'm happy because I watched my son, you know, pursue the woman of his dreams yeah and, and he got for a long time and they finally and they got each other her. yeah so that's an awesome story it's super cool uh they got engaged in ireland and uh it's cool bringing two irish families in america together maybe another trip to dublin yeah i, I would love that mm. i want to go back honestly they should get married there Ooh, <laughs> yeah, right. there you go yeah, I'm, hey, I'm not paying let's go <laughs> 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 this is when it's good to have a boy. <laughs> I think they should have it in Ireland. That's a great idea. And a castle would be perfect. Yeah, right? yeah. There you go. All right. I like this idea. So, so what else in the summer? Have we and maybe doing? a remote lockpot episode at the wedding. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Right? Fly the whole yeah, studio everybody. out, right? Yeah. yeah, we'll be the MC. <laughs> um, oh, Cubs are good this year. How about that? I'm like f- talking about the summer. So like when we walked off the air. The Cubs were not good. They sucked. They were below 500. They would like seem like they would have good games and bad games, but they were really streaky bad and they weren't hitting a lot. And then all of a sudden, they caught Cody, fire after Cody, the, uh, Cody much after the after the All Star break. Basically. Well, he came off the injured list. Yeah, and Cody Bollinger has been playing like an MVP. He's literally he's comeback player, player of the year without a for doubt. Sure. That's easy for sure. He's carrying this team. Cody Bollinger, who's a one year free agent, the Cubs signed. Uh, he used to be an MVP, and now he's playing like an MVP again. He's carrying this baseball I team. I saw a stat that he is ahead of every major league player since the All-Star break in RBIs by 15. Yeah. That's that's no that's no joke. Oh, he's a badass. Like, yeah. I, I, I love watching him play, and he's carrying his team, and I hope to God it's not just a one-year deal. But I've been going to a lot of Cubs games, and I have a horrible record this year. I'm like, I'm going to calculate my record before I go the next time. I'm not sure I've seen one Cubs win, and I've been to probably nine games this year. I, think I've seen probably I went going. Tuesday night, and I thought they were going to lose, and they came back 11-8. That, was a, that was a really good game to go to. It was fun. That was a great game. Yeah. I was watching it. Well, with my buddy. I watch every. And, uh, I watch. Are you, you watching play. pretty much every game now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch last night because I, I was watching. It the, I, yeah, I didn't watch last night. They played night. like shit last night. By the way, okay, so funny story. So uh, I think it's me, Tom, Zach. Was it just three of us? Or who? Yeah, I think just the three of us at that game, maybe? My brother and somebody. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so anyway, definitely me, Tom, and Zach. And uh, we're in Tom's seats, which are great. They're like kind of in between home plate and the first baseline. I know two hundred level, by yeah, the way. Yeah. So are like, you, you have season tickets? Uh, I'm part of a package, so B- like I'm in with multiple. Right. So I got I got ten games, which is solid. And they're they're in two hundred, so like you're not super close, but they're perfect in a lot of ways. I think once people go with me to the games, they realize how awesome these seats are. Well, yeah, are. If, it, if it's raining, you're under the roof. And like the bathroom is right downstairs. Mm-hmm. Like the sun's not in your eyes. You're not in the sun. You're right downstairs. You've got a perfect view of the game. So it's like great seats. So the Cubs are, by the way, Cubs are getting whipped up by the Braves. And, and for those people that know Zach, um, he loves a Braves, a Braves fan, yeah. right? So he's got his Braves shit on. And, but he's not a he's, he's not a, like a dick Braves fan, right? He's just whatever. like, I love the Braves, whatever. Yeah. He he's know, borderline. He, inside, he's probably loving every minute of it. But <laughs> he was being a gentleman so, that day. Yeah, absolutely. Because the Braves were beating the well, freaking Well, the Braves are so down. good anyway. It's like, they were it's beating like, them down. It's like when you were like, the, it's like when the Bulls were really good. Is it really, I it's know. really easy to be a Bulls fan because you're just like everybody else sucks. So but. we bring a Braves fan to my freaking season ticket seats and they just start kicking the crap out of the Cubs, right? And I'm just frustrated just sitting there just like watching our team just get beat, right? And then Asuna. Who's awesome. Hits a home um, run. Yeah. And it's like eight to nothing or something, right? Yeah. And his dick goes one around the bases, like strutting. Hot dogging. Hot dogging. Yeah. Like twice as long as he's running around. And then he gets to home plate and he does like a little shuffle before he crosses. This I was in between it. third and home. This happened. I couldn't take it. I'm like, <laughs> I go, Fuck you! I from just like, yelled a, you know, it like loud. From like 200 feet away or probably. <laughs> he, was more, a dick. More. he deserved it. If I was close to home plate, he would have totally heard it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was in the 200s. <laughs> he didn't hear that. But a lot of people around me did, including a bunch of kids and yeah, kids, an old and, lady. Oh, this lady. So we, I took a picture of her because I was like... <laughs> Oh, she, this is what yeah. the picture is. She turned around and like looked at Tom like with this like you. Yeah. You how heathen. dare you, you use heathen. that language here? It's a baseball Field. game. I'm thinking like, dude, like when we were kids, like 35 years ago, and I'm at that game. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. saying f you, and we were and wasted. To, to, yeah, yeah. To like the players, and no one. I was know, not that night, for the record. Yeah. I was so. totally sober, but like 
It was honestly, I'm a huge Cubs fan, mm-hmm. and that guy was being a total jerk, and he deserved it. I wish I was closer to the field because he would have heard it. It was funny. I was in the 200s. It was so funny, and Tom, only that lady <laughs> heard it. As soon as Tom, as soon as it came out of Tom's mouth, he was like, "Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that because so many these kids are right in front of us." This lady whips around. She turned around like I kicked her. Oh dog. yeah, she's like, <gasps> yeah. She turned around like, like "Who are not you?" Not in this section. Or something. <laughs> Not up here in the 200s. Not up here. And by the way, I'm a season ticket holder. I'm like, screw you. So I go back to... she? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went back to the next game. She's there. Awkward. Awkward. You're yeah. like, yeah, fuck you. You yeah, like that? You want me to do it again? I did not. I didn't say anything. <laughs> you want me to do it again? Yeah. Cubbies are... It's so awesome watching them yeah, this year. Like, are you a Cubs fan, Jill? No. Mm-mm. They're playing so good. They're so it good. Me. It's hard to be a Sox fan this year. It is. It oh, sure is. they are. And then, like, yeah, Tim Anderson just gets... Hopped. Yep. Drops They're like talking a, about moving again. I know. It's like what? Maybe I don't know. It would be it would be stressful if I was a Sox fan because they suck. Doesn't Major League Baseball have to approve that? <laughs> and they I and they yeah the owners do, but that. they you know they well, let the, they they let the A's they let the A's go yeah, to Oakland no or attendance. Vegas. You drove through Oakland, buddy. Yes. Have you, have you like playing baseball there? Mm-hmm. Want to go visit the Oakland A Stadium? Mm-hmm. Could be rough, but maybe there's, there's probably nice <laughs> you, parts. You of Oakland. were nervous driving, dude. There's probably nice parts of Oakland. You, <laughs> Kevin was nervous driving. I was like, why do we have to go off ticket here? Ticket prices would be phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh no. I mean, that's a cool thing. You could literally, if you were willing to put up with Oakland, you could go there and watch your favorite team in the first couple rows for really cheap but i've been like the <laughs> oakland airport it seems nice i mean there's probably nice parts it's fine yeah but we got off on the not nice part yeah and it t- was very Tom nice. was directing me and then he made me go in the bus lane <laughs> which, oh, yeah. which saved us 15 you. minutes you were driving you made you oh you yeah, saved true. us like a half hour probably it was <laughs> i was just trying to follow the rules did you ever get a ticket for that i don't know there you go yeah we got Say away it. with it no. thank you oakland so what else are we doing in the summer well um, John, oh. John went to Jackson Hall. Did yeah. you? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. what'd you do there, man? Uh, That's a great ski resort. Couple national parks. Oh yeah, a rodeo. Man. Whoa! Uh, went to the a shooting range out there. Wyoming. Awesome, Wyoming. Man. What were you it shooting? Was beautiful. Oh, chose between like fifty guns. Really? I shot a fifty cal. Whoa! And, like, blew my shoulder off. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was great. MP5. Um, I don't know what that is. Did you, okay. did you go to uh, like? Did you see like Old Faithful? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was incredible. Yellowstone was incredible. It's incredible. Oh man, it was awesome. It was a nice, much needed getaway after the burning out of the summer. Yeah. yeah. Well, good and happy birthday. You had a little Thank birthday you. while you were there. Yeah. Welcome Thank back. You. We went to Boulder for a little family nice. vacation. It yeah. was fun. It was get out in the mountains and it's fun. That we did a lot of hiking. Holy cow! Thank you, Mark McLaughlin, for a couple of really good hikes and uh, it was beautiful, gorgeous. I love it out there. Joe, what'd you do? Uh, worked. Yeah? <laughs> you're yeah. busy. You're busy. You're, that's I your mean, busy part of the year. In your yeah. defense, that's your job, yeah. really. It is my job. Joe works for the Port Authority. Port Authority's busy time of the season is basically between Memorial Day and Labor Day, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like uh, pretty much seven days a week on call during yeah. that time of year. Well, I know one of the things this, but, this year. But what do you do in the winter, like in the dead of winter, that, that you travel more than? Yeah, that's when I, that's when I go on vacation. That's mm-hmm. when you head out. I know yeah. Mayor kind of challenged jill and the port authority to do do some more stuff at the pav and this yeah. year was like awesome a jill, concert like, series challenged i was like i need you guys to like keep the pav busy and jill put together a concert series on friday nights and uh every two weeks pretty much we have a concert all summer i mm-hmm. mean mostly covers right yeah yeah mostly there'll be like sounds of santana kind of bands right that's yeah, i think we they were there we had visions of Santana. Visions, we visions. Had together, together, great. Uh, Northwest Indiana Symphony, like we always do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hollywood Swingin' we had was a big one. The That's cool in the back. Cool, cool in the game. Yeah, it was a cool in the game tribute. We just had uh, Talisk from Scotland. They really? Mm-hmm. And then we have Sinatra Forever Tomorrow. Nice. Whoa, that's a big Sinatra mm-hmm. Forever. The Ten folk. years. Wow, my folks go every year. They love it. Yeah, they'll be there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next year, dead. Please. I have um uh, three offers out to band. Whoa, she's See. gonna she's gonna surprise you. By the way, John, I heard somebody. But your uh, Beatles fest went down. I heard it was really good. Yeah, despite the uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of right the challenges challenges down there in downtown. Right. But yeah, uh-huh. it was it was good. A lot I of love found it. their way. Okay, there was no issues in that regard. So, hey man, yeah. I heard that there's people pitching to you like two different nights with two different bands. <laughs> Did you I tell him, it, Kevin? Yeah, I did. I thought <laughs> it was a great idea. Really? Thank you. Thank oh, you. my God, dude. Like, you, would, you would kill two different demographics doing that. Yeah, man. yeah. Like, like, tell I, me a deadhead wouldn't show up. I want in, John. <clears throat> huh? 
Phil John. I went in. Oh my God. It'd be awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you'd have like dead covers one day and Beatle covers the next day or yeah. vice versa. People would just camp out downtown. It'd be what like, like San Francisco. Is a good was, idea. The media. I, mean, I feel like I don't need to is. book a dead cover band if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll talk. Yeah. We'll talk. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's something you guys should definitely talk about. But if you did that, John, I think that would be huge. What is have, the uh, what's that street they call it? Uh, Shakedown Street, is it like yeah. a Shakedown Street in downtown. Of course, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> Shakedown Street in downtown <laughs> used to be it's the heart of town. Like, dude, they're selling mushrooms in the <laughs> in, in the, al- like, in the alley behind Russell Street. That was that threw me for a loop. By the way, <laughs> like going to California because you know I grew up in California. Open and I, air. I, drug market that was crazy they were selling mushrooms in the open air and i, I thought it was illegal but as i learned it's not <laughs> illegal it's legal oh they is could, it really they it's... could sell mushrooms in oakland and oakland's not far from san francisco it even said made in oakland made yeah. it said made, made in made oakland. with love in oakland yeah package on the, the package package like a normal candy bar selling them on the streets in san francisco which probably wasn't legal okay but like that's a freaking crazy world like we live in Indiana where you get caught smoking weed, you get thrown in jail. They're out there selling mushrooms in oh. California. It's like we live in a different world altogether. Okay. So, and I'm not like saying that's a lawless that's, town. It is lawless, Jill. <laughs> like it was like like Grand Theft Auto when we got off the highway. I'm not even shitting, <laughs> it was, dude. It was, it was like, what, that is exact. It was you're like, right. It was like it was Armageddon. Like being in a, it was like there was like fires and like people looting and running around. It was like holy shit! Like it was very. Kevin is like, what are we doing? I was here? like, we should probably get back on the highway. Yeah, I love. I wish better. we would have had that on tape. That was a funny little <laughs> moment. Let's there. just get back on the highway. Yeah. So, but hey, Notre what Dame. What a summer! By the way, Notre Dame. Yes, looking good this year. We uh, yeah, I they had to him. get a, a man for our quarterback, and I'm literally the guy's been in college football like. Seven years or something like that. I think right. Isn't it six? Isn't it's six. It, it's Sam Hartman. Year, he looks like he's forty when he's our quarterback. Well, I remember watching him when they played Wake Forest. He looked old then, and now yeah. he's playing. Yeah, he played five years at Wake Forest, and now one year he's a transfer quarterback. College football's screwed up. I love they college still football. Giving him that weird COVID year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they got the COVID year plus and a you red got, shirt year. Red shirt year, plus you got your NIL deals. They're like free agents. Mm-hmm. So Sam Hartman's like, eh, I'm done with Wake Forest. I want a quarterback for Notre Dame. Why not? Suddenly, ding, well, Notre like Dame said, starting free, quarterback. Free agent in the transfer portal, you said, is ruining football. I think also realignments and crazy, where yeah, you have yeah. like, but you know. Do you think it's all you, related? Maybe. USC and UCLA are in the Big Ten. I mean, right. good, good luck for the Rutgers, uh, you know, women's fencing team going to <laughs> UCLA for a, a you know a night a across the Wednesday country. night match. That's it. It really <laughs> screws every sport except football. I yeah, agree. And basketball, right? Yeah, because yeah. football plays once a week. Sure, right. that's true. Right. Yeah, exactly. now you're right. Basketball it does screw you. Right? Yeah, every sport. Like well, if I mean, you're like, in baseball, anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like you got to fly across the country. Think to about play that. Sports. Maryland is in the Big Ten, which I didn't even like. Maryland and Rutgers getting the Big Ten, and now UCLA and USC are in the zone. Big Ten. That's one time zone. Yeah. It's three to go to the West Coast. Well, even not even one time zone if they go to Ohio State and things right. like that. Right. Penn State. Yeah, exactly. Right. Indianapolis. It's right. the same time zone. You're right, man. Yeah, it's just for. But I mean, going college to, football is in trouble, man. Yeah. And you know, the cool thing about college football is next year they have the expanded playoff, mm-hmm. which is something I've been looking forward to like my whole life as a college football fan. And they're totally unstable right now. But why have the, conferences the, at this point, dude? Like, I, don't I don't even know for the big for big for big schools like the top five conferences. Why have conferences? I don't even get it. They're all over the country now. Yeah, they used to be regional, but mm. I still like college football. I love college yeah. football. So. You want to uh, knock some ads out, and then we'll come back. We got a couple stories, updates. Also, uh, got a mailbag. Oh, I love mailbag. I've this missed mailbag. And then uh, we got. I missed John's we got a, lips. We got an update. Oh, jeez. There There's you go. Title. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin misses John's lips. Uh, if I had a dime, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> at least. We're gonna come back and update the audience on a lawsuit that was filed against your beloved. Left of Podcast. center media. LLC. We got sued. We got sued. We got sued. Isn't that incredible. And it was pretty early on, right? Yeah, I was like, in. Yeah, it was. Season. We were yeah, on probably like season five, so year one and a half or something. <laughs> Jesus. It's, within a year and a half, we were sued. Uh, it was it's, uh, not a class action, but there was multiple defendants. We were definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. We the pod. The pod. But mm-hmm. we got an update for you. So we'll get into that. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to talk about. Some other exciting stuff. Yeah, you're gonna if we have stick time. For yeah, this. this is good stuff yeah. coming back. So uh, let's go ahead. And we're gonna knock off some ads and uh, let's start off with Tortillas Nuevo León. Mm. It's the gold standard Mexican cuisine across the Midwest. Look for their iconic red and white label at your local grocery store. 
Indulge in the finest Mexican products crafted with local expertise and savor the taste of authenticity. Discover the flavors of Tortillas Nuevo León today. Tortillas Nuevo León, hechas con amor para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. Tortillas Nuevo León, hechas con amor para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. So nice to hear that again. Welcome back, Eli. That was a new read, too. Oh, I'll get into I'm gonna When we're done with the ads, okay. I can't wait to explain this. But All right. Yeah. Steve's been getting creative. Yeah. Uh, kind of. <laughs> Go ahead, Jill. Powering America, Lake County. Is there a Powering America in another county? Powering we don't know. In it's, all of America. We're, no, just, we're just doing it to be safe. And they no. said, we can't say it anymore. We have to say Power in Indiana, right. Lake County. Oh, right. man, I already jacked that up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. I, Power in Indiana, right, exactly. Lake County. Power in Indiana, not America. <laughs> just Indiana. <laughs> just Lake just County. Lake County. <laughs> Lake County. <laughs> Lake, screw everybody else. <laughs> Keep the lights on here. Schmitty, and there's more than one Powering America. <laughs> 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 Ain't no HIPAA violations on Lockpod. <laughs> nope. Power in Indiana. Lake County. I-B-E-W, local 697 and N-E-C-A. Nika. Kevin, just you just FYI. fucking read this. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't write that. I should have do the pronunciation there. Go ahead. Are you okay? Take two. Uh, okay. Take three at this point. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they proudly introduced Powering Indiana, Lake County. With over a century of experience, we've been safely wiring the region. From powering corporations along the lakefront to lighting up homes across the region, Powering Indiana, Lake County is your trusted source for electrical professionals. Join us as we continue to light the way for Northwest Indiana. That's a good. That's a good read. Mm -hmm. That's the best ad we've had in ten seasons with Wow. With powering. Wow, good job, honestly, Steve. Good job, Steve. Right? I think honestly, they're sitting there at Powering Indiana right now. Going, they have like little tears coming out of the corner of their eyes. They're like, "That's mm -hmm. a freaking ad." If only there was a phone number or a way to contact them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just look for them on. Yeah, yeah. we just Google know. it. Yeah. It was a yeah. great ad. Donna, go try to find them. <laughs> yeah, good luck. New, with our new name, Powering <laughs> Indiana Lake County. Start with that. Those are good search terms. Misprint printing elevate your brand with Misprint, the premier printing sign, the premier printing and sign solution in Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana. With a 30-year legacy of excellence, their experienced team led by Rick Baltensberger combines innovation and technology to deliver, to deliver top quality signs and printing, always on time and within budget. Visit them at MissPrintIndiana.com to bring your vision to life today. MissPrint, your partner for creating impactful visual solutions. Cantrell and Cantrell, attorneys at law. When you're facing legal challenges or injuries, they're here to guide you through the process. Our dedicated team, including John and Kristen. I mean, legal challenges or injuries. <laughs> Our dedicated team, including John and Kristen Cantrell, is in the court and at the jail every day, ready to fight for your rights. Oh, to, to party. party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was, you can't just put that in there without no. saying that. Call John Cantrell at 219-554-4LAW. That's 219-554-4529. Or visit their website at bettercallcantrell.com. Discover how we can make a difference in your case. You know what? Like in all seriousness, Cantrell, like John, would take a case to fight for, for your right to, right party. to party. I, oh, yeah. I, thought, I thought I was thinking the same thing, John. <laughs> I was like, that is exactly yes. good for John. Yes. Yeah. Perfect for that. Like he would show. You want a party? Like a, we'll fight. Like a jacket without a sleeves on it or anything. With oh, the yeah. tuxedo oh, yeah. t-shirt yeah. out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your Honor. By the way, John is. <laughs> in addition to being a great lawyer <laughs> and sponsor, Honor. John is one of the big. One of the bigger Lockpod fans, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. likes it. He listens to every He likes episode. the format. He's in every episode. He's on his way to court. He's, He's in every to do. episode. He's, He's like, I'm going to drive to court guy. and listen. Appreciate that. He's a frequent guest and an every episode guy. Mm -hmm. Always has suggestions. I yes. appreciate it. Thank you, John. Yeah. A lot of the stuff we cover come to us from. While he's busy fighting for audience. your right to party. That's right. Calumet Brewing, Lake County. <laughs> 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 but not just Lake County. Yes. Bush, oh man, I should have read this before. Bush Light, the coldest and smoothest light lager, is calling you to embrace the great outdoors, the roar of NASCAR, mm. and the joy of cracking mm. a cold one. Join us in celebrating life's moments with Bush Light and head over to Cal Brew on Facebook or Instagram for, oh, there's another giveaway? <laughs> that won't happen. No. That won't happen. No. <laughs> there is not. No. We're going to end up with it. It'll be in here in a minute. Guys, it's a fake igloo cooler this season. <laughs> Oh, I could use one of them. Igloo cooler. Let's see that. <laughs> Steve, yeah. get it to the studio so we yeah, can have Yeah, we got to give that away to our audience. So Tom can have his beers that he's going <laughs> to shotgun. 
<laughs> I'll put it next leak to my all over the Snoop Doggy Dog <laughs> yeah. that I was supposed to give away. Sweeps are running through September. We've got a lot of junk whatever in that here. means. Visit Bush dot com and their social media pages for exciting updates and events. Head for the mountain of Bush Light and enjoy beers and cheers responsibly. Prestimer Insurance Company. For decades, the Ron J. Prestimer Insurance Agency has been your trusted neighbor right on Indianapolis Boulevard, serving all your insurance needs. Their wide range of insurance products and services, including auto, home, business, and life insurance, have helped over 1,000 individuals and businesses throughout Chicagoland and the Midwest. Call Ron or Ronnie today at 219-844-0103. They're here to protect what matters most to you. Byway Brewing. Byway Brewing, a family-friendly microbrewery, welcomes you to our spacious taproom and outside patio. Enjoy award-winning craft beers, a chef-driven menu, and craft draft cocktails. Our unique brewing equipment and production facility provide a perfect backdrop for private events, whether it's a bridal shower, reunion, or corporate party. With our new food truck, we can cater to your corporate and private events off-site. Customer service is our top priority at Byway Brewing. Just off of 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue South Exit in Hammond. Discover more at bywaybrewing.beer. Kuklakis Law. Are you currently navigating complex legal challenges? Unsure of where to turn for guidance? Your search ends here with Kuklakis Law, your trusted partner for legal solutions in Indiana and Illinois. Whether you're seeking expert representation for real estate transactions, need assistance in forming your business, or have experienced a personal injury at work or in a car crash, Kuklakis Law is here for you. No matter the nature of your legal issue, our team is ready to help. Call us today at 219-671-6347 to schedule your free consultation. Hablamos Espanol. Thank you to our sponsors. So a couple things. One, uh, you know, you love that powering Indiana Lake County ad. Uh, Doty, who's big, mm. big Lockpot fan and, and mentioned that every C- episode, Cynthia Prieto from the branding room wrote that. So awesome. great job. Uh, Steve also told me that he put all of our ads into AI and this is what it spit out. Really? <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. That sounds Are you right. Serious? Yes. That sounds right. Really? Yeah. I, they I, were good. I, they were OK. They were lo- they were wordy. Yeah. It's like, and yeah. like excellent. There's a lot of like words like wordy. excellent yeah. and impactful and right. but i thought yeah. that was interesting so good job steve is anyone right. shocked steve took the the easiest <laughs> no to rewrite <laughs> new ads well i knew when i, I was like put this these doesn't sound like GPT. steve writing them uh, so. steve does a lot of writing though he's yeah. uh, he does oh no, he is good he every is press good. release coming out of the hammond police department steve does yeah. that's right yeah and, and most of our ads until and a he lot shot of them into ai maybe now the police department's gonna do ai dude what? can you imagine <laughs> One of the things <laughs> about the police department, any ad issued by anybody nowadays, a lot of times when you issue those ads, they end up almost word for word in a newspaper. Yes. I'm not just saying with us. I'm saying in general, sometimes when you drop an ad, a press release from a city, a press release from a county or state government, a lot of times these reporters are overworked. A lot of times they don't even know what they're going to write about on a Saturday and they get something like that. They could print the whole thing. Yeah. Like word for uh, word. Well written. Because it's got it's well written. It's got quotes in it. And they just put like from time staff and they just slap it in there. The death Keep of the journalism. Out. Dude. Yes. AI. No doubt. <laughs> like that's one thing I've seen in my career is I've seen the journalism field shrink. Like I, I've seen it at the times when I first took over. Well, WJOB well, had reporters when I first took over. Yeah, the the radio station had reporters. The Times had tons of them. And the photographers, Post-Tribune, photographers. They'd Talk have people that. assigned to like meetings, so you would always go to a meeting. There'd always be the same reporter in there. Nowadays, the Times still has a photographer, but like a lot of times you'll see reporters taking photographs. Dude, there could be a fist fight in a council meeting, and the media would miss it now because they just can't they're, cover it. Well, they stretched, don't have this stretch too thin. Stretched, yeah. They have literally one person assigned to multiple cities where I live and she's a great reporter, but she's stretched so thin she's covering multiple cities. Mm-hmm. Like how can you, how can you add a cl- Well, you just can't hit all the news. You just you can't. can't. Yeah. It's impossible. So, right. I mean, like going back to what Jill said, so we have our local papers here. Death of journalism. Full of news. Which, I mean, it's sad. I'm, I read the paper every day. I, I get the paper delivered to my house. I'm old school like me that. Me too. It's sad to me because people are so close about what's going on in America and in their own backyard. And it's not going to get better with, newspapers going away there's got to be something that takes its place i'm with you i like the local i like reading my local newspaper well people also don't know basic grammar anymore i I can't write i am not kidding so phones i bet i love sending stuff to you because you actually like edit it and check it john's the same john's a good editor as well but Mm -hmm. i I think what i've noticed and this is just going through like kind of like hiring people or looking at and the kids are so used to just Mm -hmm. snapchatting and texting right 
that like writing a business letter, yeah. mm-hmm. forget it. Right. Forget it. I agree with you, man. It's crazy. I, I mean, it really is something I've noticed. I agree. Yeah. And yeah. well, like if you look at writings from people like a hundred years ago that were quote unquote uneducated, mm-hmm. like they were so smart compared to the average uneducated person. Oh, like now. 200 years ago. Like, yeah. All you did was read. You I know. No TV, no know. video games. And, like, the no uneducated internet. back then were geniuses compared right. to nowadays. Yeah. Think about it. Like the uneducated. I love the poorly educated. <laughs> <laughs> It still works. John's yeah. like, I hope this works. Yes. <laughs> Was the button sticky? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It like For different beer. reasons altogether. Oh, whoa. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hey, yo. Hey, uh, we uh, got sued. We mentioned that. Lockpod got sued. It was it was an incredibly short period of time that we were on the air before we were sued. And I'm sure our, but our insurers were probably like, what in the fuck yeah. did we insure these guys mm-hmm. for? Like, we insure them and they get sued within like the first year. They look at their Rolodex of podcasts. <laughs> they insure they're like, no podcast has ever been sued. <laughs> 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 Leave it to this one. We're in the Guinness Book of World Records, I yes. believe. Yeah. It we was finally the quickest defamation lawsuit for a podcast <laughs> category. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that. What was the name of those podcasts that were, John? We should have. Should yes. Have that, what are that those? category? We're finally going to win one. <laughs> we the were Am- like the Ambleys or something, man. <laughs> like the equi- the rap equivalent to us is like two live crew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. So anyway, uh, we got deep sued cut. by Spiros Batistados, actually, mm-hmm. uh, the former head of the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority, who was his contract was not renewed by the Convention and Visitors Authority, and Spiros alleges I was in a conspiracy. Among others, I was in a conspiracy myself. This has nothing to do with Lockpot at this point. I, he alleges I was in a conspiracy with the board that I was suing and that we conspired together to get Spiros fired, which is not true, but that'll all bear in the litigation we're going through. Lockpod was sued for defamation. It was. For something what? I said. <laughs> yeah. You defamation. don't say anything that would. It was no. not defamatory. It was truth. And the, what is the ultimate protection against defamation cases, Kevin? Uh, the truth. Yeah, <clears throat> the truth. Mm-hmm. You could be sued for defamation. The best defense in a defamation case is the truth. So as long as I was telling the truth, we should be fine. Well, and some, by the way, some opinions are covered as well. I mean, you can criticize government. You can criticize public officials. And I think Thank that's you. another important point that you made, Mayor, is that, you know, I'm criticizing government. Right. I'm criticizing excess. Okay, I'm- so for instance, <clears throat> guys, you could... Start a rumor about me that says pretty much anything, Jill, especially as a Hammond resident. You could say, I think McDermott is a thief. I think McDermott is dumb. I think McDermott <laughs> is a drug addict. I think McDermott, whatever, insert whatever. And you could put it out on Facebook. You could put your name to it. I, Jill, think Tom McDermott's a dumbass. And I think he's stupid. He's not competent Spends enough. too much money. So, like, spend you reading my lazy. Facebook page? Yes, I am reading <laughs> But you could do these things. I better (laughs) delete those quick. And And I couldn't sue you for defamation, Jill, because it's totally not true, of course, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is you say these things about me. I can't sue you. I could sue you for defamation. But in your case, not only do you think it's true, not only that, I'm your mayor. I'm a public figure. Mm -hmm. And you have a right in America, the First Amendment right, to criticize government officials like myself. So the question in this case is, when Spiros was the head of the South Shore Convention and Visitors Bureau, spending millions of dollars... Well, I mean, he had a million millions of dollar budget. Sure, right. I mean, he's, of taxpayer uh, money. Yeah, okay. I mean, he said no hotel motel tax. That's taxpayer money, buddy. So you have millions of dollars of taxpayer money going through your organization that you're directing on how and where it's going to be spent. That's public figure, buddy. And I, as a Lake County taxpayer, have the right to criticize how public tax money is spent, which mm-hmm. is what I did. I did it on Lockpod. I did it multiple times in public. I got my ass sued for it, which I think is unconstitutional. I think it's chilling me. He is trying to intimidate me so that I can't criticize the way he spent money when he was running that bureau, which is why we filed a countersuit against him. Yeah, well, actually, he filed a motion to dismiss, um, and Lockpod was dismissed, which was great news. I'm talking um, about the anti-slap. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mayor. Yeah, that's right. And, that, and well, so there's, a, there's an ability that if you feel like you've, your speech has been chilled, like the mayor just described, like, hey, I'm, you know, he's trying, he's suing me, and that's supposed to chill what I can say and right. chill, ex- I just intimidate the me. Truth. And there's a, there's a statute called anti-slap, which says if a public figure sues you for what otherwise is a First Amendment right, right, right to speak, to free speech, that you can then recover against that person. The things that I was saying turned out, upon further examination, to be correct. Huh. Funny enough. I said he uses taxpayer money like a weapon. 
He did use taxpayer money like a weapon. I said he spends thousands of dollars at Steakhouse. He did spend thousands of dollars at Steakhouse. I said a lot of things that turned out to be true. I said he made over 300000 a year. They determined he made $330,000 a year. I brought all these things up. He was not happy about it, but it turned out to be true. Well, no, let's take it another step. And this is just kind of a hypothetical, but let's say that, you know, the other thing that's important is let's say they weren't true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question. He's a public figure. Good question. So he, let's say I brought something up that turned out to be not true. Yeah. I said, let's say I, I said, it, he makes 500000 a year. If I said that, I didn't say that. But if I said that and it turned out he only made 330000 a year. Can he sue me for defamation? <laughs> I mean, he could, but yeah, I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be a public figure, right? Right. It's got to be defamatory, right? Right. So I don't know if that. But there's like defamatory. a defamatory. Sure, but then there's yeah. He's it's a New York Times versus Sullivan standard. You have to have. Um, uh, why am I missing malice? This yes, thank you. Actual malice. So Kevin. So, so John. John says. Mm -hmm. God, I just totally lost my train of thought. Well, no, let's say John says something about uh, Tom, you know, as mayor. Right. The mayor's a thief. The right. mayor, you know, and that's not true. And it is defamatory because he's alleging a right. crime. Okay. Right? Right. And, but you're a public figure. So his defense is, well, I didn't do it intentionally. You know, I mean, I'm not, that's not actual malice. I just think he's a bum. Right. I think he's I a think thief. He, right. I think he's, I think, he's you know, I think he doesn't I think he is, I think he is yeah. a thief, right? Yeah. Right. And then, like, can I sue John? You okay, could, John. but you'd open yourself up for anti-slap because he because you're trying to chill his speech. Mm -hmm. And he's because you imagine if there was nothing like and you're that. a public figure. So, like, what would happen, Jill, is I would chill everybody if there was no anti-slap. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody even got litigious towards me, I have lawyers galore. I could file lawsuits against them just to chill them. Just be like, hey, you defame me. You said something to so-and-so. And then people wouldn't say shit about you then. They'd be like, I'm not saying anything about McDermott. Because every time you say anything, he, he sues you, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have nobody in the public talking about public figures. And then the public figure could do whatever they want. So like rewind about eight, ten years ago, um, a guy named Matt Markham, who works for the city, yep. made a parody yep. of a councilman. It yep. was like a little, it was a video, you know, it wasn't real... It was crude. It was yeah. It, it was sure. great. It was funny. It was but, funny. It was, it was yeah, great. It was great. <laughs> it was it was funny, time, but it was, was a satire. Because like was, if you looked at it now, it's old technology. But at the time, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was like it was <laughs> like, like a, it was like a picture of the councilman with like um, clutch cargo lips talking. Yeah, and like talking and it, like it was as if he, the councilman was talking. Right. Whatever. It was it was crude, like you said. Okay. And it and so it was obvious satire. Obvious. The, of councilman, a, of a the councilman sues Matt Markham uh -huh. wow. for Matt, defamation. Yes. And um, Matt Markham um, counters, counters sues the anti slap and recovers. Wow. Yeah. Recovers like 30 grand or something. Like that? No, it was more like, I think it was whatever, 15 or something like that. But yeah. Right. Nice. Right. But I mean, that's a, that's a great example of right. what you said. You can't, you, like, when you run, nobody made me run for mayor, right? Nobody made the councilman run in that case, right? Nobody made Spiros take the job as the head of the tourism bureau. That receives millions of dollars of taxpayer money. Nobody forced him to take this job. But when he took this job and decided for the you know twenty years he was there running that organization, you know, branched mm -hmm. together, that, you know, he was gonna spend millions of dollars of money. And, you and when that you spend millions of dollars of money, people are free to criticize. And you give away as a public figure, you give away part of your ability to be uh defamed otherwise defamed, which otherwise right. a private citizen would consider defamatory. Okay. Yeah. So, so people on the board, so yeah, all right. I think we made our point. Yes. <laughs> but like, honestly, because I'm now everybody got dismissed from the lawsuit except for me, basically. True. And, uh, uh, so and, the, board and the board. The board. And the, and so, the, well, so the, you got to remember the. So the, Lockpod's cool. Lockpod's out. Yeah. The, the, Mayor Tom. Still in. Still the case. in. Oh, no. Still in the case. Yeah. But some limited discovery to determine whether or not anti-slap is. Which means I'm going to get deposed by these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to ask me like. We already had an episode on that. They're going to ask me. Yeah. Death prep. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. It's a good one. That is a good one. That is yeah. a good one. So for those of you who want to go reminiscing, go back to the <laughs> debt prep. I don't remember. It was like season who four. Who doesn't want to? Yeah. Reminisce. That's a good one. But uh, they're going to ask me like a basic. Do you like him? And I'm going to be truthful. No, I don't. I do not. And that's fine. I don't have to like him. He doesn't have to like me. I just don't. I don't like people like him. And Kevin showed me a story that like emphasized even more why I just don't like this guy. And I never did. But like that has nothing. Since he left his spot at the Convention and Visitors Bureau, I haven't said two words about him but other than defending myself about the lawsuit. Yeah, and I, just I don't care about him as a person. Like go live your life. You're never going to hear from Tom McDermott again, Spiros. But as long as this lawsuit's going, I'm going to have to defend myself. And the other thing I was just going to say, Mayor, is that you mentioned that the South Shore and part of the, the board members are still in. There's It's a, kind of a different... Um, claim right they, they claim that like they terminated age them unfairly age discrimination 
and some other. Isn't things. that crazy though? Spiros is he was like fifty seven when this happened because he's sixty now, and his replacement is my age, fifty four. Mm. Age discrimination. Like no, they didn't renew your contract because you had baggage galore, Spiros. That's why you got let go by the South Shore Convention Visitors Bureau, not because of age discrimination, not because of a conspiracy against you. There was baggage galore. That's what I'm going to say on my deposition. The guy brought so many negatives. That's why they had to let him go. I, I understand why they did it, but I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so, well, that's that. It's are gonna, you going there? But uh, We got a little bit more. This is actually crazy, and it's just interesting to me uh, because, again, I it's think public, it's public, right? Yeah, it's, this, is on link, <laughs> this is on LinkedIn. So, are we going to get sued again? Cover your no. bases before we get this into is this. Public. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, there's nothing defamatory okay. about this. I'm, How, it's, I'm, not on li- I'm not on LinkedIn, Kevin. But uh, you yeah, so I'm not looking for a job. So no, I see nor the globe I. here, which means it's a public post. Right? Okay, okay, all right. So, um, Spiros is on LinkedIn, and I got a text yesterday from a friend of mine. Is like, have you seen Spiros on LinkedIn? And this, like, is this... LinkedIn like social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like, you could just so, like, so, post like stuff? business social media. Yeah, it's supposed to be like for you know jobs or like talking about your career or, or what's going on. I mean, I guess you can post anything you want, but I think the idea is it's like the business Facebook. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I guess the best way to put it. You're on and there? I'm, I'm on it, but I don't use it much. Like, I noticed, like, my kids and Are you stuff, on there, Joe? I mean, I think I have a profile, but I'm never on there. Yeah. I'm not either. Same. I have a profile, but Same. something's developed. Or, you guys don't want to tell me you're looking for jobs, right? No, I mean, just, I think, but, like, you know what? <laughs> oh, no, like, I'm no, looking no, no. for a job. I'm not on there. <laughs> I'm always, <laughs> we're always looking for jobs. <laughs> yeah. But I noticed, like, uh, like Ethan's age, Chase's age, those guys are all on it no all way. the time. It's like they're, you know, like, I would be surprised if, like, Chase didn't say, like, oh, yeah, my LinkedIn profile, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, yes. Um, so, anyway, the, uh, oh, all right, Steve arrived with the igloo cooler. Oh, nice. It's actually nice, a pretty right. legit cooler. Yeah, yeah it is. That is not going to make it to the guests. No, yeah. that for sure. Yeah. Tom won? Oh. Unbelievable. Yeah, right. <laughs> what were you going to say? Yeah, so, anyway, I got a text from somebody last night, and I just... By chance, we were talking about the Spiros lawsuit this morning, and he was like, have you seen this like on-and-on fight that Spiros has on LinkedIn with Off Square Brewery? Who is like, Off Square Brewing is a, you know, it's a pretty famous brewing yeah, brewery. I've heard of it. Crown Point, it's in Crown Point, right? Yeah. I think it's been around a while. A beloved brewery. Sure, in really. Absolutely. I've, never, like, I've never yeah. been there, but I've I heard would, of it. I would say it's like Crown Point's, like 18th Street or Byway, okay. yeah, you know, it's sure. right. their popular. It's a big one. Yeah. Right. Like and right so off 65. Yeah. Spiros had a, what he describes as a, I think he, uh, he described it as a dumpster fire in one point and also the worst service by a locally owned restaurant that he's ever encountered. Yeah. Uh, wow. And he goes on. Yeah, and on I read it. We're not going to read it. But no, like, no, no, no. It's literally we'll like pages through. and pages yeah, of like just slamming the owners and slamming like, how Servers. bad of a job. By the way, he called up like last second to have a party of 24 for his 60th birthday party. He called up last second and they accommodated him. And then he just goes off for like the next couple of days just slamming how shitty it was and how crappy service and how the owner tried to make it good and the owner screwed it up even more. It's like he like here's a quote. I'm shocked. I'm sad. I'm, I'm saddened. I'm insulted with business practices like this. This business will fail. It's just a matter of when. Mm. And then, John, go to the top. I just want this to read is the former he, head of the Convention and Visitors Authority, by the way. Well, he, like who does that? It's Spiros is LinkedIn. He says business leader, tourism expert, community servant. Of, and I think mm. he says dynamic speaker, too, is one of his things. But he says, and this is interesting because I just thought he was he, slamming he all of the described region. Described himself as a dynamic speaker. Yes, I think it's on there. So Ugh, this is what God, he says: guy. Given the Jill, state, Jill, do you know him? I know. Do you him. see why he's tough to love? I can see that. <laughs> okay, sorry, Kevin. I didn't it's, no, it's not of la- for lack of confidence. Yeah, so right. anyway, he says, given the state of Northwest Indiana's hospitality industry, which is punctuated by a dramatic lack of skilled servers and managers nice mm. nice there you go spiros for all of you in service that's industry. the edited version <laughs> yeah, yeah right. oh yeah this is edited <laughs> look at that yes yeah, so i mean wanna... honestly like who calls up the day before for a party of 24 gets accommodated and then freaking rakes him across the coals for the next few days after that this guy has a following because he's the former head of the convention and visitors bureau so <laughs> this guy is ki- like 
That would be like me criticizing the Hammond Police Department, raking them across the coals. Who does that? Yeah, he did say he waited six months to post this. It, it was yeah. just, it was like March. It's just interesting to me God. to see how on and on and on and on and it goes. He He's definitely has an axe to grind. He's very aggravated when with people post Brewery. stuff like this. I don't know why they think anyone cares what their well, opinion is about any of this. This is Spiros this. we're talking about, though. But I mean, like Spiros. when anybody posts it's stuff Spiros like this. Stuff. Oh, you're right. Okay. Spiros stuff. You're right. I mean, but it was a small. When Spiros small feels this way, everybody's gonna fall in line, Joe. <laughs> small gathering hey, of 24 people. He just wanted to say it was small because usually his big gatherings are hundreds probably. Yeah. I feel bad for the server. Because yeah. like, he said it, she was a Did new server. Did he identify her? No, but he said he was a, it was a new server. And it's like she was just kind of told to do this last minute party. Yeah, you know? they called the day before. Yeah. yeah. So go but on, he, like, go he does on go on to say like even he just he wanted this to be made right. And he goes on to say, even if they offered him a thousand dollar refund, which is what the bill was, he wouldn't take it. It's, he says it you... would be rejected with the same extreme prejudice <laughs> that the owners only offer ever, which was for dinner for two, prof, prof he meant proffered Proffer. on three twenty one twenty three. Hmm. How do you make it right if you won't take a thousand dollars? You know, got some attorney fees to pay. He should have taken that money. I think the guy, I think he said somebody referred. That. Wait, you got it? Yeah, let actually, me find that. He said the chef had been in like. DM contact with him or texted him or something. And he said, he right offered here. me five hundred dollars because, quote, I'm involved in a lawsuit and need to pay my lawyers. And atta- <laughs> and that was the off square atta- chef. And attached that? a link to a local news story. Oh my God. That, that's gotta be us, right? I would think yes. so. Yes. And maybe it's the like, owner we're in of the his chef arguments. People are using us against him in their <laughs> arguments. That's He's, awesome. He sued us. That sounds more like a slap. Oh, whoa. Hey, here's Steve. Steve. Hey, Steve's off. Get his mic on. Yeah. That's, that sounds more like a slap in the face from the from the chef, though. He's like, "All right, what? Well, you're yeah. involved in a lawsuit. Here's, Here's a thousand bucks. bucks. That's for totally sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, if you want to see the whole thing, check out LinkedIn under Spiros. If he doesn't block you, he's tough to love, ladies and gentlemen, and he's suing us. So, if you love Lockpod, wait, love him. He may okay, be it's... tough to love. We want to avoid another defamation. He right? may be. <laughs> he may or may in not. In my be. opinion, he's tough to love. In <laughs> Mayor Tom's opinion, I'm still Thank in a you. lawsuit. Yeah. Don't bring Lockpod into this. Yeah, no. Lockpod does not feel the way I do. I feel John, like disclaimer, throw please. your disclaimer up. My, yep. my right as an American citizen is he's tough to love. Welcome to Steve Kellogg uh, in the studio, our business manager. Thank Steve, you. great job as usual. Uh, and again, thank you for a great job at Oilman Stadium. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, Oilman was, was, was great. Um, that was, man, what a game. Like, it was a great game. They killed it. The the food was great. The beer was great. Everything was, man, that was, that was a good night. I was impressed, like Kevin was saying, we were playing catch with the Oilman before. I just figured all these kids were like from like Crown Point, and, right? And I'm like, so uh, where do you go to school? Because they're all college players. Michigan State. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what position? He's I'm starting shortstop. I'm like, you're the starting shortstop for Michigan it's State, cool, right? Playing on the really cool. Oilman. Yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, that kid. And they said almost all the kids on there were D1 players, dude. Like, if you're the starting shortstop for Michigan State, you got a shot to go pro. Agree, no doubt about it. Minors you're, at you're least, looking at, you're going to get. You're looking drafted. at the draft every year. Mm-hmm. You're seeing friends of yours get picked up, like people you play Guys against. You played against, yeah. yeah, Big Ten, yeah, that's awesome. No, I'm going to have a little uh, have a little gift from you. Uh, I don't have it just yet, but they they have your your pitch that you threw out, and oh, yeah. they're Ball. all signing it, and uh, they're going <laughs> to give it to mm-hmm. you. So <laughs> it was a strike. It was not fast, but whatever. <laughs> that's all right. It's a lot better than some others I've seen yeah. you pitch. That was a good yeah. One. I, I hit Jake one time, and, and Jake was nowhere near home. Like Twenty play. feet off. Oh, I'm not that, even shitting. Was it on purpose? It's like I had oh, a spasm no. when I threw it. It was like, like it was like 2004, like, or 05, probably. The ball went the wrong way. I yeah. my life, I've thrown thirty thousand pitches. I've never done one that bad. It was like I literally hit him, and he wasn't even near home plate. It was on tape too. What do you got, Steve? Yeah. Oh, we have uh, yeah, we have uh, some. That's sw- the cooler. Swag. Yeah, this is the cooler. Well, this is not. So they're giving away two. They're giving away one on the website, and then of course they gave us one to give away on Lockpod. So we have a bush light cooler. This thing is bring uh, this baby on the table. All right, we're gonna. That's a nice cooler. Yeah, it is. I hope it survives the season. Makes me want to start drinking. <laughs> not this early. That's though. a freaking holy cooler, cow! Man. Like it's like yeah. a. Steve's that looks a big, like strong a strong guy, but he. he what are those? Oh, wow. What are those cups? Those nice cups. Well, it's full of bush light. Oh, it so. is. All right. Is it really? Whoa. Are you serious? Are they cold? All right, time oh, to shotgun, time to shotgun another shotgun. one. You don't, you don't care <laughs> if cold. they're cold. They're warm. <laughs> Not cold. No. Yeah, but full of bush. That light. is right. nice. Man. Full of bush light. Chat, uh, send us a hundred stars, and Tom will shotgun a no <laughs> a warm bush light. <laughs> I didn't know that was. Like, and then he will vomit all over the studio. <laughs> that was worth like four. And cents. we won't clean like it up. Yes. 
<laughs> like yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's Steve. a real. That's a real gift we're giving away. We're gonna give that away later. That in the season. deserves a lockpod sticker on it. Oh mm-hmm. yes, wrap yes. it. No, yes. I have misprint. Wrap, wrap it. it. Yes, yeah. misprint. Yes. Yes. Wrap the Whoa. cooler. Yeah. Well, they'll never use it then. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one will use it. Like, <laughs> and we also have a bunch of swag from them. Uh, they gave us as well. Thank you, so, Cal Brew. Bunch of Corona. So yeah, thank you, Cal Brew. Love it. We got a lot of swag built up in our studio. Did you ever we need to pick stuff up from Oilman Stadium yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> I have our swag from from Oilman, so Ooh. it'll be available online. And we got those extra extra large underwear. If anybody wants them, still I got a bunch of pairs over in the corner. <laughs> Eighty dollars worth. I possibly. don't see anybody rolling with those. Seriously, Are you still wearing them? No, no. <laughs> No, I think they're flammable. <laughs> <laughs> like they're, they're Wait, are you wrong. giving away the used ones? Oh, no, there was oh. one. I threw them away. The one used. You pair. threw them away? Bullshit! You oh, took yeah. those to Ireland. I did not <laughs> take them to Ireland. That's how you got Corona. <laughs> yeah, I got Corona yes. on my From genitals. The underwear. <laughs> the Corona rash. It's unique. We've never seen this before. <laughs> corona on my genitals. Should yeah. that be the title? Dude, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we didn't get to mailbag. We'll do that next time. Oh my god. Next time. Dude. Next. Time, All right, we'll two. do mailbag next time. Wrap it's, us up, it's worth it. it's worth Welcome it. back, everybody. This Thanks, everybody. Great. That was a long episode today, but next episode we'll start off with mailbag. We got a lot of stuff saved up, so our first few episodes should be solid, and then we'll get back to the shitty content you're used to. So <laughs> it will run out soon. We'll be back on Tuesday. Right now we got Jill's on Friday, Lindsay on Tuesday, so Notorious LMP will be in the studio on Tuesday with us. Thanks for being here again, Jill. It's great to see you. Kevin Smith, awesome. Thanks, Steve. Great reads this year. Thanks for all the hard work. Uh, our, business manager you got appreciate it, it. jay vez good to see you back mm-hmm. and uh coming again live from locomotive it's great to be back on the air we'll be back on tuesday with season 10 episode two thanks everybody we're out lock pods out